Hey guys, this is Jay Calder with Jay Unboxing here giving you a personal prediction for F.A. Ajagbe versus Stefan Shaw. And as always, this is just my take. Your prediction can be left down in the comments section below. Would love to hear them all. This is going to be a pretty decent fight too. It's kind of our first real pick em of the year. We're only two fights deep, so that's not too bad at all. So we'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments section below. And a little bit of fight info here. We have a Jogbe versus Shaw taking place at the Turning Stone Resort and Casino in Verona, New York, airing live on ESPN. And this is in the heavyweight division. And it's an interesting big man fight coming to us early in the year. Originally, Jogbe was set to face Oscar Rivas, but ultimately the latter was replaced with, in my opinion, a better test in Stephen Shaw. So does a Jogbe continue his comeback since the first career defeat or will Shaw pick up the biggest win of his under the radar career? Let's break this one down and find out. So we'll start with the jog bay here. For a jog bay to win, I think you want to keep a busy jab. Now while you don't have the most prolific jab, you certainly have the longer reach, so you're gonna want to use it. And the easiest way to do that is by sticking that jab out there and getting it going. This also of course can help set up your power. Furthermore, it's one of those shots that you can kind of bust them up with a little bit, especially if you really get it going in those middle and later rounds without having to use as much of your energy. You're a power shots guy. You like to throw with a lot of force. This is a way of kind of preserving some of that, but still getting some of the action going and, of course, scoring in the fight. This also will, of course, naturally push Shaw back. And as it forces him back and up against the ropes, you can corner him much more and get some of those punches really going off. And this is the best chance I think you have of kind of scoring consistently without having to chase him around the ring. And as I sort of alluded to there earlier, don't load up preserve energy down the stretch you're going to need to you're a big guy who throws with a lot of force you can't be doing that from round one all the way to the final round and expect to have a great result if you're putting everything into every single shot this is especially dangerous against a fighter like Shaw who is much more a mover and a boxer if you get tired he's really going to be harder to catch in those later frames Instead, when the power flows, it tends to be more impactful anyway. This will preserve that energy. And then down the stretch, if you need that bailout power, you will have it. And you can definitely make him pay as you're pushing him back to begin with. And finally, I would say cut off the ring. Shaw likes to move. Obviously, that means you're going to want to limit that. This, of course, will also help set up some of your more powerful shots anyway. And you have to make sure you limit what he does by trying to cut off those corners, those escape routes, if you will. Step to the side, corner him, and when he's there, make him pay. Don't just step back and try to make everything pretty. Sometimes this might have to be ugly for you, but you have to make sure you're making him pay when you have him in those kind of pivotal moments. Don't just let him escape. Cut off the ring and make it count. And switching it over here, for Shaw to win, don't be too cautious. You have been a bit hesitant in the past. You're one of those fighters that's good, but doesn't quite seem to relish closing the show or stepping on the gas or going through the gears. In this fight, you have to do that a bit more. You have to effectively earn a jog base respect and tame him a bit in this contest. Now, no, that does not mean you have to be wild or crazy. Don't rush in. Don't just let him land something on you and really engage in a way that benefits his power. But you have to be willing to engage. That's going to be important in this fight. Let your smoother, faster shots flow. Do it enough that you're getting his respect and scoring and continue to increase that as the rounds progress. I would also say throw the left hook to the body. You dig to the body well, so it's a shot that you should work into the fight naturally. It's one of the better shots that you throw, especially for a heavyweight. Heavyweights don't always dig to the body. You do pretty well. This will also help sap some of the strength and power out of a jog base, so it works in a multitude of ways for you. Of course, it's going to help set up some shots upstairs for you later on, weaken him as the rounds progress and it's kind of a shot that you have a better chance landing on the inside when you do have less reach as you do so it's a little bit of a safer shot that you can dig inside when he does get there tie him up get the referee to separate you rinse wash and repeat it's going to be beneficial for you to kind of get that going in this fight the sooner you can the better and i close it all out here by saying take him to deeper waters now i mentioned you want to stay busier you do want to commit at times you want to land those bigger shots early still the best chance to make a jog bay pay and have to dig deep later on is by making sure that you're taking him into those final rounds. You probably don't have the power to stop a jog bay. He seems like he has a decent chin. I'm not saying it's impossible. It's heavyweight boxing. But you're going to be more of a stylistic fighter in this fight. That's just most likely. So again, the way that works is by taking him into those deeper waters, 
making sure you tame him along the way just enough that you're fighting at your pace at your range digging to the body as i mentioned to get him tired and sap that energy and then in those later rounds you can close the show strong and leave that impression on the judges and hopefully do enough to take a decision win now in terms of my pick here i've gone back and forth with this one but i'm going with the very slight underdog in shaw in this one I think Shaw can implement a similar game plan to that of Frank Sanchez against Ajogbe, the man that gave Ajogbe his first defeat by moving well, landing just enough power shots with just enough power, and make Ajogbe miss, what leaves that sort of impression on the judges' minds. It's heavyweight boxing, so perhaps I could be dead wrong. Wouldn't surprise me here. But I see Shaw moving, using his quick hands, digging to the body, and then circling away from danger as he continues to score and picking up the rounds as he does so. While Ajagbe has the reach, the speed will frustrate him enough that he has trouble scoring enough of the time and will ultimately kind of get him into that kind of shell where he's not comfortable throwing enough, leading to your winner, Shaw via split or majority decision. And in terms of the betting odds here, you do have Ajagbe at a slight, slight favorite at a minus 120 to Shaw being at a minus 105. Again, it's basically a pick em fight, but call it what you will, those are your odds there. Good value in both, honestly. Um, you could also get some better value if you picked either by a specific decision or knockout win or what have you. So some good value either way. Just kind of depends on what you think happens in this fight, of course. Personally, I'll take those 105 odds for Shaw if I was a betting man. Maybe something in the small to medium range there. Again, it's heavyweight boxing, you never know, but decent odds there. In terms of your over-under, they actually do see this fight being close because, again, you have an over-under of eight and a half rounds, which is pretty high for a heavyweight fight with a guy who can bang a little bit like a jog bay can. The over is at a minus 190 with the under being at a plus 135. So again, they're kind of seeing this fight last a little bit longer than some might perhaps presume on paper. Because it is heavyweight boxing and you're basically looking at a 2-1 to one for the over, that's not a great deal of value there for me. The under, again, somewhat of an attractive option, but... Still, I do see Shaw winning a decision, or at the very least, a Jogbe winning a close, kind of ugly, tight fight. So either way, those aren't great odds, but nonetheless, those are your odds. And my prediction record as of January 5th is zeros across the board, as this is still the beginning of the year. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments. We'd love to hear your thoughts, predictions, bets, so on and so forth, especially about this one. Who do you think wins and how? Love to hear that down there. Please be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, and follow. It really does mean a lot to me when you guys subscribe. So hope you guys can go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Follow me on Twitter at jcaldron underscore J-O-B. You can email me at jayunboxing at gmail.com. would love to hear from you there. Also be sure to check out jayunboxing.com for schedule, results, betting odds, rankings, all that good stuff. Just updated the schedule so you can check that out, of course. And as always, until next time.